Am I hungry? You bet. The last real thing I ate was a glass of water after I got thrown into jail. Oh, hi there, and welcome to part 17 of Chrono Trigger. Today we are going to be jumping back into the action after uh, this dreary and boring place called the end of time. Anyways, today we are going to be going to the Medina Village in 1000 AD. Medina? 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 I've heard it pronounced both ways, but I prefer Medina. Anywho. Uh, um. Oh. Uh, hi there. Sorry for coming out of your closet. I, I, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Oops. Uh, uh, hmm. Yes, I'm indeed human, and it looks like you're fiends. So they're going to tell you that, hey, sup dudes, we're like chill with humankind, even though we totally fought that war 400 years ago. But you know, the rest of this village, yeah, they're going to want to eat you alive. So be careful, go check out the human west of here, because I don't know why that human lives over here with fiends. Because logic, that's a thing. Out into the great outdoors we go, we can do some exploring actually. First off, before we even check out the town, uh, you might want to head up to the north and you could grab a mid-ether in these ruins. Now this looks cool and all, but we can't do anything here until late game, so just uh, ignore it for now. And then we could go take a look around the town. The first place you can go is the Elder's House, and you will find here Ozzy the Eighth. The leader of this village. His great, 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 great grandfather fought against the humans at the side of the Fiendord himself. Hmm. Can't wait to meet him. <laughs> Anyways, he's just some bully who doesn't do anything around here. Now, if you look very, very carefully, there is a hidden speed capsule right here. This is your first speed capsule of the game. And it actually doesn't hurt to use it if you know for a fact that one of the four characters you have on your team is somebody you want to be using a lot, then use the speed caps on them. Uh, speed does not grow with levels and it caps at 16. So as long as you don't have like a, um, an item that, like an accessory that boosts speed, uh, you can definitely use those speed capsules. Speed capsules are the one type of capsule that I definitely recommend you can use because there's really no reason not to because you don't have to worry about the person maxing out their stats if you care about that kind of stuff. You can also grab a magic capsule downhill here. Feel free to use that. It's also hidden, uh, but there is a sparkle to point it out. Uh, those are probably two of the more difficult hidden items to find in the game, but they are visible, so yeah. And then there's two last buildings we can check out. Uh, one is an inn, and one is a shop. Now, you can stay here, but yeah, they don't like humans. So, if you plead to stay here or buy stuff at the two places, you're going to have to fight. You are going to have to go into combat against a Gelwer and two of the, uh, the the things, I forget their name, I think Diablos. Uh, and then you also have to fight the Underling Blue. They're very similar to the enemies you've already fought in the game. And then, they will charge you ten times the going rate for items. So save your money, it's not worth it. Uh, if you want to heal, uh, as you saw in my little intro clip, you can eat. There's a meal that this guy will have for you. And then you can also head over to the west to visit a certain human to buy your goods. Who is that human? Well, you might actually recognize him. His name is Melchior, and he's the dude who sold swords at the Millennial Fair. So if you're interested in buying from him, feel free to. He sells all the essential normal stuff like shelters and potions. And he also sells some weapons. Uh, three of them you could have got at the Derelict Flat Factory. He also sells a Crimson Blade, which is a little bit stronger than Chrono's current sword. Uh, for 4500 you could pick that up if you want. Uh, but the next area that we're going to, actually, you won't be using much of your weapons. And then you can also pick up some Titanium Vests, which are really, really solid armor items. Uh, feel free to pick those up if you want to. 
Uh, Luke is going to be getting some good armor soon, if I recall correctly. It might be a helmet. I have, I have to check my notes. Anyways, uh, feel free to stop by there, and that is about it. Oh, I totally forgot. You can also go visit the Medina Square, and this place is really creepy. Like, it's like a cult here or something. You got people circling around the statue. It's so creepy. And they're honoring the great and mighty Fiend Lord. Uh, some of the people say stuff like, 400 years have passed since Magus commanded the fiends and waged war against humans. But Lavos, they actually do mention Lavos. When Lavos awakens from his slumber, the human race is doomed. Yeah, that might be true, considering I've seen it for myself. <laughs> uh, not really sure I wanted to see that for myself. Anyways, so how do we get back to the Western Continent? Because, you know, we're on a different continent than our hometown. Well, to get there, you have to pass through a place called Hecron Cave. Death to enemies of fiends kind! Welcome to Hecron Cave, a very, very interesting place. Now, there is something special about this place. You will note that most of these enemies are strongly resistant to physical type attacks. And you'll find that magic here will utterly destroy and pretty much one-shot everything here. So, the rule of thumb is, is if you're attacking something and it's not doing any damage, use magic on it. Uh, magic is the way to go. And uh, you, at this point in the game, you'll probably be sitting around 30 magic points, maybe a little bit more if you're a little above the cut in terms of levels. And that's good. You should be able to get through this place without any others just using the magic you have. You'll be using lightning, ice, and fire to wipe out your enemies in the path. Now, keep in mind that Luca and Marla have a little bit stronger of magic compared to Chrono. You should not use Robo in this place. I don't think Robo is good, uh, necessarily, just because his magic isn't really comparable to that of Luca and Marla. So, I prefer the trio of Chrono, Marla, and Luca. You may be itching to use Robo, but wait a little bit more to use Robo. For now, this is the best trio to get through this place, and like I said, magic will destroy this place. You will be sweeping through here no issues with magic. Uh, if you do need to use an ether for whatever reason, that's fine. Uh, you'll be getting a million of them throughout the game, so it's not like you're in need of... Unless you've been spamming ethers thus far in the game. Come down here, and this is actually the central and largest room of this place. We'll loop through this room a few times. There's also a few outer exits through this place. Now keep in mind, you can also use Whirlwind and Flamethrower here as well to try to hit multiple enemies. Uh, you can use that to your advantage. I don't know, Flamethrower and Whirlwind are a little bit weaker, so you might not be able to get a one-shot on them. Just to give you an idea of how weak physical attacks are, three damage. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. You're not going to be doing a lot of damage to these enemies without some form of magic. Now, not all the enemies need to use magic on them, but most of them are going to require magic. Flamethrower actually came really close to knocking out the Rhino Weevil. Uh, there are five new enemies in this place. We've already seen three of them. Uh... And honestly, there isn't much to say about the enemies here, except they're weak to magic. Now, the beastinary entries actually don't really show that. Uh, I don't know why they don't really show that. Like, they all have moderately decent magic resist, and it doesn't say they're weak to magic. So I'm not really sure why the entries uh, make it sound like they're not weak. Uh, but they are weak to magic. Very weak to magic indeed. Um... I just find that odd that their entries just don't really elaborate on that. Didn't I use Flamethrower? Okay. Did I not did I not click? I'm, I'm confusing myself. Oh, I need more sleep. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. 
head over here and we can find another new enemy. And these are another set of bats. Now these bats aren't the same as the ones you fought in 600 AD. Uh, they are cave bats, which are a little bit different. Uh, they do kind of line up very well for Luca's Flamethrower, so Luca's Flamethrower should be perfect. That is, if you have your party in this position of having her third in your party, and I actually didn't KO. Um, Whirlwind also should work against them. Ah, they keep living with, like, no hit points. It's so lame. <laughs> Uh, you'll probably, if you want to want to hit KO and you're not over leveled, you're going to have to use your strongest form of magic. Now, I think the reason they made a place like this was because you just learned magic from Specchio, like, ten minutes ago, so, uh, magic is pretty cool. Now, it is also worth mentioning that once you learn magic from Specchio, you can start working your way towards new techs. So, right now, Napalm... Cure and Chrono. You'll notice that Robo actually never really stopped learning techs and he could keep learning techs even without learning magic. Now there is, aside from the main three heroes of the game, the only other character in the game you have to go see Specchio to learn magic with is Frog. Uh, everybody else either is incapable of learning magic or they already are skilled enough in magic that they don't need it. So, just keep that in mind, you'll need to go back there later when we get Frog back on our party. It'll be a little bit longer, but we're actually getting near the part of the game where he rejoins the team. So, that's just worth mentioning because you might have forgot about Frog. Uh, Specchio does mention, hey, if you'll find any new friends, come visit me. So, you'll need to keep that in mind if you want to go learn more magic. So... Tech points now are back to being useful. You probably had a large period of the game where they weren't even that useful in the future because you couldn't learn any new techs without having magic. Uh, I'm guessing they did that just to make it uh, so the future was more balanced in terms of combat because there was a lot of enemies that you could fight with where magic was strong but they didn't really want you spamming magic against them. Plus, early in the game, you don't get a lot of magic points. Head up here, you can grab yourself an Ether, and then drop down here, and we can head to another little side room. This place is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's not that difficult to navigate at all, so don't worry about that too much. Uh, in here, you can fight some Boundillos. We fought a group of them earlier. Uh, they're kind of similar to, you know, all the other roly enemies we've fought thus far. And like the rest of the enemies here, they are obviously weak to magic. Magic, magic, magic. Magic is the name of the game in this place. If you're using magic, you are getting through it alive. Head over this way, and you'll find some more bats. Yay! I just love bats. Bats actually, realistically, aren't that bad of creatures, but I don't know. In Chrono Trigger, they're annoying. <laughs> I don't think these ones are as evasive as the ones in 600 AD, the regular bats that we fought. The thing about these ones is you need to use magic on them, because you saw how little damage my Chrono attack did. My Chrono Counter. Chrono Counter. That should be the name of a sequel, Chrono Counter. Uh, if you are curious, by the way, uh, I don't know if I've ever really mentioned this, but there is a sequel to Chrono Trigger. Now, I say sequel lightly because a lot of hardcore Chrono Trigger fans do not really consider it uh, an adequate sequel, I guess would be the best way to describe it. The game's name is Chrono Cross. It was made for the PlayStation. PlayStation 2, I think? I think it was PlayStation 2. Uh, believe it or not, I've actually never finished it. Uh, I had a copy of it, sort of, not really. I played a copy of it, I should say, for a little bit, but I never was able, I never owned a copy, so I couldn't finish it. Uh, but the problem with Chrono Cross is it really, really, really loosely connects the story of Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross. Uh, there's actually a lot of interesting fan works that exist. 
that try to make some form of sequel to Chrono Trigger. Uh, one that came to mind is Crimson Echoes. It was a fan sequel that was made, but Square Enix gave it a cease and desist, which means they had to disband the project. And it was dis... The project was 98% completed. Uh, it was actually... I There was a leaked version of it that I actually got my hands on and played, and it's a really good project. It's a shame that uh, Square Enix cease and desisted it. Uh, there is actually a channel on YouTube for that called CE Memorial. Uh, if you ever were interested in checking that out. It, but be warned, it obviously has spoilers to Chrono Trigger. Uh, there is a sealed box here, which is in a very unusual location. Uh, that's probably one of the weirdest sealed boxes in this place. Uh, just keep that in mind. We'll come back there later, as with all the other sealed boxes. I know you're just itching to see what's inside of them. Uh, anyways, that actually wraps up the cave. There is a save point here and a boss fight the fight. So I recommend that you use a shelter here because you might be a little bit low on magic. And then save if you have to. And then we can head up here and prepare to fight the boss. Deaths to enemies of fiend's kind. Here is your boss of this place. It's called Hecarom Cave for a reason. This is Hecaron, your boss of the place. And like all the enemies here, he's weak to magic. I know, right? Such a shocker. Uh, don't use physical attacks on him. Just use magic. Antipode Bomb, Dual Tech from Marla and Chrono, or, or Marla and Luca are good. Uh, I'd recommend using those. If you need to heal, you can use Chrono and Marla's Aura Whirl. Whoops. Uh, da, da, da. And use Chrono's Lightning Attack. Now he has a counter attack stance, and this is the main thing to note about this boss. Uh, Hecron isn't too bad. Uh, the main thing to note is he's going to go into this defensive stance where he says, Go ahead, attack me, see what happens. When you see this text, don't attack him. Uh, it, it may be obvious, but don't attack him. He'll also make a weird little pose. If you attack him, what's going to happen is he's going to blast you with water too. Really powerful tech that will hit everybody on your party. It's really strong and it hits hard. Uh, just use Aura Whirl in this time period. If you have Robo on you, you can also use his and Luca, uh, his and Marla's dual tech as an alternative option. Uh, otherwise, Chrono and Marla's Aura Whirl makes uh, things pretty easy. This boss battle is probably one of the easier boss battles in the game, just because. He literally tells you, hey, let's take a break so you can heal. That's basically what his counterattack is. It's basically free time for you to heal. Because there's no reason to attack him during that period of time. All in all, Hecron's not bad. He has quite a bit of hit points to whack away at. But, uh, overall, not difficult at all. See? Go ahead. Heal. Please. Have some free time to heal. Now, if you haven't played the game before, I can understand you making the mistake of accidentally hitting him. Uh, you just have to be careful before you press go on your text, because that counterattack will hurt. He'll also mention, hey, counterattack disengaged for you, so that's convenient. Uh, overall, you probably won't need too many magic points. You might be able to get away without even using a shelter at the save point. Uh, 250 experience, 10 tech points, 1500 gold, and then he's going to tell you, if only Lord Magus had destroyed the human race 400 years ago when he first brought forth Lavos, the world would belong to us fiends. And then he dies. Well, judging from what he just said, that leads us to believe that Magus maybe created Wavos in the Middle Ages. So we should probably head to the Middle Ages to check things out. 
So to the fairgrounds we go, off to 600 AD. So how do we get back to the mainland? Well, it's quite simple, you see. Jump in! Wee! And welcome home. Next time, we will make our way to 600 AD. That wraps up this part. Thank you, and good night.